Right now, it is time for the Frick and Frack of Nick and Knack. That is Tim Luke and Greg Schramm, the appraisal guys. Uh, and you can find them right here on Robin Hood Radio, uh, of course, on a Tuesday morning, which you can find them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on the website, uh, which is uh, tqag.com on the web. You'll also find them on Facebook. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey, good morning. How are things down there in the sunny state of Florida? Sunny and humid. <laughs> okay. Well, that was that was unanimous. Okay. <laughs> well, it didn't rain yet the, today. It, this morning it's sunny and probably about eighty-two degrees or something like that, and humid. So seventy-eight and very humid. Seventy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, so now are things uh, starting to return? Uh, like, as the phases take effect, does that affect uh, what what you do, Tim and Greg? What, what uh, does how how does that affect what you guys each do? Well, for me personally, I've been doing um, virtual appraisals more, la- much more lately. Uh, the, it's picked up su- substantially in the estate uh, arena. Because, uh, you know, people uh, don't stop dying and the estates a lot of times need to have the uh, contents of the homes or condos appraised. And we don't really, I don't really personally feel like going in yet, but since we do have the capability of using the... uh, uh, iPhone and, and FaceTime in particular, it um, it does make a big difference, and it has uh, uh, increased our volume somewhat during during this time. And I think it's going to be the wave of. It's not going to be so um, questioned in the future because the first time I did one, uh, one of the questions was, is is this going to be legal? I mean, is this a real appraisal? And it's, well, first of all, it's not an appraisal, it's a valuation. But we have in the past done appraisals on things that we have received photographs from. And as appraisers, we we were just talking about this yesterday, Tim, (laughs) about uh, Uh the uh, when you're when you see something, and you're not able to see it fully, the the assumption is that it is real and you put values on it based on what you are assuming if it is and you just have to use the language to state that well this is what i saw this is why i couldn't see certain things but if it were what it is purported to be it would be worth this much right. so that's an extraordinary assumption because it has to be on the value so the whole thing is as long as you can do credible assignment results and come up with a figure based on the information that the client has provided, then great. Yeah, go ahead. And from my perspective, working with a uh, this larger firm in across the country, we're starting to see that the uh, business development people have been uh, very active and really, really busy and starting to crank the machine back up again. Uh, I've yesterday had calls from a, a number of inquiries uh, for appraisals in the on the west coast of the U.S. in Los Angeles in that area, and also New York, and we're getting uh, <clears throat> busy in Florida. So there's a couple of estates that, uh, like Greg said, you can't stop that. That just happens. So there's a couple of estates that uh, I had to put some numbers on as far as what the proposal would be to go on site and actually do it on site. Um, and uh, do the estate appraisal. So we're we're starting to to get back into it uh, slowly, slowly. But it is opening up and it's moving along. And that, I think one of the things I think one of the things that needs to be mentioned though is for us in particular, and I'm sure we're not the only appraisal company that has done this over the over the years, and that is to do these virtual uh, walkthroughs and these appraisals from photographs but now i think uh, it's becoming more acceptable and more the norm and i think it's going to change how we move forward yeah well the one in particular i I have to work on and i'm calling the the 
uh, they have an archive of things. So I'm calling the archivist this morning just to go over what do you have? Do you have images? Do you have inventories? What, what exactly is there so that I get a better idea? And really, that's what it comes down to. It's the appraiser's responsibility to do the due diligence of asking the right questions and asking a ton of questions to really get the context of what it is that you're what it is you're appraising and what it is that the client needs. And if it's for insurance purposes, great. Or if it's for fair market value because they may want to sell it, whatever that is. So that's that's the most important thing. And I think what this whole time has really helped us hone in on are the the uh, the amount of the amount of questions and the number of questions. It's just been increasing. So whereas in, in the past we would just say, oh, OK, now we have an idea. I'll see it when I get there. Now we may not get a chance to see it or it's based just on photographs. So now we're just telling them we're going to need a little more a little more information and ask more questions and be more uh, into, you know, really do more investigating. Um, <laughs> it brings a new meaning to the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand <laughs> words. Now, do you put like <laughs> yeah. a, uh, when you do this, do you, do you do a, like a little disclaimer that says uh, due to COVID-19, this is blah, 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 this re or anything like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And because the other things about that, Marshall, is that uh, so we do a we do a disclaimer. And I was fortunate enough to sit on a panel that was all of the three major appraisal organizations. And I was one of the panelists. And we put together a just a basic blanket statement that that said on March, what was it, March 11th, the pandemic was declared. And we don't know what that effect is going to have on the market, but it is up to the appraiser to check out and do their due diligence for their asset class. Because for certain things like memorabilia and wine, it really hasn't, hasn't curtailed it. People have been buying. Um, but in other areas, yes, uh, they, they have seen some downturn where there was already downturn, like with uh, some brown furniture and some, some mass produced decorative arts. So. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we always say this in good, bad times, good stuff always sells. Good mm -hmm. stuff always does. It's just when you have a bunch of other stuff, then people get a little more particular, especially in times like this, if they're going to spend their money, they want to be sure that they are uh, getting what they're getting good stuff. And I think it's also worth saying when we first started in this uh, industry, and we were taking the core courses. Uh, we had an instructor, and this sticks with me to this very day. And her uh, saying, mantra, mantra, mantra was, <laughs> say what you did and why. Even more importantly, say what you didn't do and why. <laughs> and never more uh, now. It's never more important as it is in these yeah. times to do exactly really? what Shirley said, because if you have the documentation as to why you did or didn't do something, then you're covered. And that's what we have to do as appraisers is make sure that the information that we're giving is not only um, lit, honest and straightforward, but is also uh, can be explained and there is a reason for what we do or what we do not do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been um, it's it's been a real interesting time because, you know, people, it is it is changing. Technology is advancing. There are I, I think I've taken more webinars in the last two months than I did in the last 20 years. Uh, but that but it's been good because I've been able to advance uh, my education and also get some other uh, personal uh continuing education uh, numbers in and hours. And, and that's been great. And I think that that is, you have to really be able to take advantage of this time as well, is that, okay, it's not as busy. Great. Let, what, what can we do to better ourselves as professionals? I think that's important, but it, it will start to get busy and I think it will come back roaring. Uh, I think that there's just going to be more and more people, uh, just need to be very conscious about uh, hand washing and hygiene and being safe when they do go out, venture out and do these things because 
uh, it, it, we do need to move forward. You know, that's the whole thing. You know, it's interesting to look, uh, if you look at, at, at states uh, like, like Texas, uh, the hospitalizations of coronavirus since they opened up have skyrocketed, and uh, they skyrocketed also in certain areas of, of Florida. Uh, and I think yeah. we're going to learn up here, uh, the way we come out here, what happens up here within. It takes about two weeks to a month to get the full effect. But what's interesting in what you're talking about business, uh, I found out today, talking with uh, Thorin Christendotter of uh, Main Street Magazine, they did an interview with Bob LeBonds, who has an excellent market here in Salisbury. Mm-hmm. And in the first uh, month of the pandemic, Listen to this. His business was up 300%. Of course, Uh people were trying to hoard at that time. Uh, But when you think of pandemics, uh, you don't think of like a a grocery store's business being up 300%. But but then when you look at all the news headlines from that period, uh, then you understand, yeah, uh, it might have been one, two, or three items that people were buying, uh, but they were were buying inordinate amounts of it. Um, in bulk, right? in, in bulk, and I, I was just wondering, you know, art lovers uh, are art lovers, and I think that if they want something, they're gonna they're gonna go to an auction either virtually or not virtually to get it if it, if it becomes available. Right, but I think that also there's been some uh, holding back of really great stuff because people just wanted to see. It was a wait and see mentality for the higher end. I think the middle market is is still strong. And that is, and I can back that statement up by saying that all the major auction houses, Christie's, Sotheby's, Phillips, um, the, uh, Bonhams, they all pulled a lot of their higher blue chip pieces uh, that were going to sell in May and June and they're, they're, they moved it to July, hoping that July would be good. So what did they do in, that me, in the meantime? They did, uh, they've been really ramping up their online market. That, Sotheby, it was Christie's or Sotheby's had a record for online art auctions because people were buying, and they are buying. So it's, I think that, that they will see when they do this, and it'll be interesting, and we'll report on this in July. Christie's is, is taking a whole other tact and they're trying to be very uh, innovative so they are holding one sale in across the globe in i think it's four or five different sale rooms uh, around the world so at the same time it will be going live in new york in london in hong kong and there's i think one other place um and they, they will be selling from those locations their highlights uh, because all their sales had been delayed. So they're doing it in one, this one, it's called one. It's called one, and it's they've been marketing this. So it'll be interesting to see how that, that plays out. And yes, you're right, uh, art lovers are art lovers, but there are some areas, as I said, that there are also people looking for good deals and bargains and they're feeling that if they have money the market has gone down or not the market but the people may not be as savvy to be bidding online so it might be an opportunity to see if we can scoop something up where there isn't a lot of competition and one final point that that jill just said that there are also bunches of people now who are going to start uh, refurnishing their new houses because the real estate market up here, when this COVID-19 thing struck, yeah. people purchased a lot of houses uh, to get out of New York. So obviously uh, they'll want the same yeah. things up here that they have down there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's a, that's a good point because I know the real estate market down here is doing it's okay. Booming. It's really booming well down here. Uh, for that reason specifically, it's because people um, – were moving a lot of times they it, there was an article that I had uh, listened to on uh, um, I think it was on Bloomberg and they were talking about people moving from the areas that were hardest hit to air are- looking for real estate in areas that were not hit quite as hard so there again your their market is being created so 
So I guess I guess yeah. it's one of the things that you could say. Well, this might be the lemonade from the lemons, but uh, it's a hell of a way to have to make lemonade, I will say. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want you to stay safe uh, and healthy and happy down there, and uh, we'll speak to you next week. Terrific. Sounds good. good. Take, Take care, care guys. Take care. Uh, Tim Luke and Greg Strom, the appraisal guys, the frickin' frack of Nick and Knack with the praise this, TQAG.com on the web.